Hey, Dr. Mike here. Today's topic is salt. Is it as bad as it's made out to be? Stay tuned to learn more. You're listening to Live Foreverish, a show dedicated to helping you live just a little longer. Here's your host, Dr. Mike and Dr. Crystal Gosser. All right, welcome to Live Foreverish. Uh, I mean, listen, uh, Dr. Crystal, salt. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> I come, listen, I come from a family of salt users. I always would tease that my dad would salt a salt stick. I mean, we were just salt people. Mm-hmm. And I am, I don't, you know, and I've told you this before. I think there's two broad types of people in the world. There's sugar cravers and salt cravers. I'm a salt craver, without a doubt. I'd rather, have pota- I'd, I'd rather have potato chips than a cookie. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah. But there's so much more to salt, right? I mean. Uh, well, it's just good. That's one thing <laughs> I know. I know uh, growing up, I was, I felt deprived. Uh, we, I grew up in a home with a salt substitute. <laughs> so you were a Mrs. Dash family. We had the, yeah, the herbs. Uh, the potassium chloride, we'll talk about that a little okay. bit, but that that's the home I grew up in. Every We were watching our, our sodium uh, because my father was diagnosed with hypertension in his 30s, like really young. young. Okay. Um, yeah, well, that makes sense. I get likely that. stress-related. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so we, he was the salt police. He still is the salt police. Okay. And that's not, listen, there are, and we'll get into this. There are certain populations that definitely need to watch salt. Um, you know, but I think, you know, where the opener here, is it as bad uh, for you as it's made out to be? I think we're going to explore that. Right. And I, and I, and I, and as a clinician, I kind of have my own opinion about it, but yeah. it kind of depends on who you're talking to the population um, right. that you're talking to, to be, to be able to answer that. Um, give us okay. So, as as a as a doctor of clinical nutrition, give us a rundown. Just salt. What is salt, and what's the difference between salt intake and sodium intake? Oh yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, so, salt is just a combination of two minerals, sodium and chloride. <laughs> good. Yeah. Uh, both are essential electrolyte minerals. We need them. They are found in the earth. They are found in our water. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it's, we, we do need them. They perform important functions in the body um, needed for uh, digestion. We talk about uh, HCL, the hydrochloric acid uh, in your body is needed for, um, for electrical impulses and, and nerve transmission. Yeah. Um, and they're needed to help get things in and out of your cells. So yes, they are important. Sodium, of course, salt is, let's go back. Salt is just referred to just the plain sodium chloride. Right, right. Sodium is what you find in food. And that is just kind of the, the USDA's definition of, of just that that mineral pulling yeah. out that mineral component right right it's the 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 salt sodium chloride is what you what you find in my dad's favorite salt shaker yeah <laughs> that, right right but then you have to also consider the the salt content or sodium content of food at, at the end of the day so right. they're looking, you're looking you need to look at both mm-hmm. right and you want to and, and so it's 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 the, the medical establishments they what they what they look at and what they measure is sodium intake um, yes. on a day, on a daily basis. What should, um, do, do you know the, I think it changes a lot for men versus women. What is that sodium goal? I mean, ideally 1500, which is <laughs> low. So, low. Uh, so that's ideal. You see about 24, 23, 2400 milligrams, um, is, is acceptable. Uh, that's the amount that the body needs per day. We are consuming, um, more more. than 4,000. Way, yeah, way more, right? Yeah. Milligrams. And, and just to go back to like the, the salt, sodium chloride, um, table salt is about 40% sodium and about 60% chloride. 
So again, on those labels, they're telling you that sodium amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there are some, you know, foods out there, processed foods, some of the, some of the prepackaged soups and stuff. I mean, one serving, you have 1500 milligrams of sodium and some of that stuff, right? Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. Just a, a general uh, value meal from a fast food location. I, I mean, I, I any, and I'm not like pointing out one in particular. You could probably go to them all, even the <laughs> ones that are considered healthier for you. Even a lot of the vegan options, the plant-based burgers loaded with mm -hmm. sodium in one yeah. burger, you're, you're hitting your, your max. <laughs> I, you know, I, I just, I think in general, we, you know, it, sugar and salt, we, we love those things in the United States. In this country, that's, if it's, if it's sweet and has a little salt content to it, we're going to eat it and we're going to eat a lot of it. <laughs> right. Yes, we so are. Incentive, I think in some of these, with some of these prepackaged food um, manufacturers to kind of load up on that stuff, keep us wanting it. Right. I, I do. I think there's a, there's a little strategy there. Right. At least, at least oh, that's what I think. for sure. And that, you know, another topic when you just see the processed foods, it's, it's the salt, it's the fat and the sugar. You don't see that combined in nature. Yeah. Like not like that. Right? Name yeah. a food where yeah. it's it has as much sugar, as fat as, you know, as the salt. And so, yes, we researchers have realized that this taps into to the brain, the pleasure reward systems in the brain. Um, and so we just have to be careful and, and you can train yourself to not be so um, salt, flavor, craving, craving <laughs> desiring it. Like you, you can train those sure. taste buds. For sure. So when you, so some people will then ask, well, how do I know if I am getting too much salt? I think it, it, a simple answer to that is if, if you're eating a standard American diet, you are. I mean, there's just that, that's a simple answer. Yeah. But, you know, as a clinician, we look for things like water retention. That might be just puffiness, wrists, ankles, um, uh, and, and not necessarily at the end of the day, you know, especially in your ankles, which might mean vascular stuff, too. But yeah. you're just kind of bloated almost all the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's that's it. Yeah, maybe there's something going on there. Uh, weight gain. When you have too much sodium, you hold on to water. And your weight goes up, which is why mm -hmm. taking a diuretic will drop a few pounds right away because yes. you're losing a lot of that, a lot of that water weight. Um, and then, of course, blood pressure issues. But I will tell you, can I just give you my when it comes to blood pressure and salt? This is just my thing. OK, let's hear it. OK, I got it. I got to sit up straight for this. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> well, because I, I, I and this is based on research. What I'm about to tell okay. you is, is observational research coming from, you know, good clinical publications. If you're healthy and you don't have high blood pressure and you have healthy kidneys, that's a big stipulation, mm. salt doesn't cause high blood pressure. The issue becomes if you have kidney issues or you already have established blood pressure, then too much salt can cause problems. Because if you're healthy and you have healthy kidneys, your kidneys know how to get rid of salt. That is very true. Now, that is well supported in the literature, but I know a lot of cardiologists are going to probably email me if they're listening to their show. <laughs> but that's, well, that's that's that is really what I saw as a clinician that, that that if you're healthy and you got healthy kidneys, again, that doesn't mean you put salt on a salt stick like my dad would, right? But um, you know, keeping your sodium around the two thousand mark or something like that, whatever that that number is, you're you're probably fine. And we do know that some people are salt sensitive, which kind of maybe supports sure. what you're saying. Um, yeah. I read a study about a year or so ago where women tend to be more salt sensitive than men, meaning that the the body responds, you know, with the bringing in the holding on to the water or maybe the blood pressure response to that sodium intake is just more pronounced in women than yeah. men. So it's now, not there, a blanket it, statement. It's not a blanket. And, and there's there now I have another list though. So that's just blood pressure. Um, in a healthy person who may be getting too much sodium, which, which we estimate what about 4,000 milligrams, right? For, Oh, for sure. For, for most, <laughs> that, and that's, that's way too high. There are some issues, you know, forget about blood pressure for, for a moment. 
Um, cardiomyopathy has been established with high sodium intake. And that's not necessarily just from um, high blood pressure. There is too much salt causes these your heart cells to kind of engorge and, and have issues with, with water and stuff like that. And that makes it hard for them to pump. Mm-hmm. So you get cardiomyopathies and you can have um, heart failure issues, kidney disease, osteoporosis, kidney stones, stomach cancer. These are all oh, things that are associated with those 4,000 milligram numbers right, that most right. people are doing. Now, if you mm-hmm. back it down to the 2,400 or you said even 1,500, then you don't see those things. So, so sodium by itself does have some clinical implication, but we, we, we seem to focus it all on blood pressure. And yeah. that's not necessarily the case for a lot of people. It's these other conditions. Right. That's true. But I think blood pressure is a good marker that something's going on. I mean, you can measure it at home multiple times a day as well. Yeah. Well, if you have high blood pressure and you're being treated, um, and most people take two to three drugs these days to get treated and you're still not controlled, maybe it's time to look at your salt intake. Cause remember if you have high blood pressure, salt can make it hard to treat. And we know that, um, that reducing the salt, and this is where it gets tricky Reducing the salt has been shown to be beneficial based on the DASH diet, but the DASH diet is also adding in lots of vegetables that's giving you magnesium, Mm -hmm. potassium, that's helping to balance out the sodium. So yeah, DASH diet, dietary approach to stopping hypertension. Yes. um, I don't remember the exact numbers, but if you do follow this, so it's less sodium, it's more, more potassium, more magnesium, more calcium, all that kind of stuff. I think 11 points for the systolic and five or six for the diastolic all by itself, just that diet. Just that diet. Yeah. And guess, and guess, guess pretty much what the DASH diet is. Mediterranean. Mediterranean. I knew you were going to say that. Mediterranean. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's our, our, that's our, the diet to follow, right? That's, that's what we uh, think, think is most import, important. Um, so what do we do? How do you, as a, as a doctor of clinical nutrition, again, you know, you, you if you're, counseling somebody who, you know, you look at their diet and they're, and they're obviously bringing in way too much sodium. Yeah. What do you like? What are some of the things you would tell them? What, what do you offer them? Well, that's a, a good question, Dr. Mike. I suggest one is to combine your salty foods with potassium. Potassium yeah. will balance out the, the effects that salt has with kind of drawing in that water. Potassium is sort of the uh, the antidote <laughs> for, for lack of a better <laughs> way. So, yeah. so um, I suggest having coconut water with your pizza. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Thinking about some of those, those higher potassium foods, have a banana. I also suggest, and this is just me, obviously, this is Dr. Crystal's, personal suggestions is to think about like garlic with salt and things that can kind of thin the blood a little bit with, with the salt so that, um, so that the blood is kind of flowing and pumping a little bit better. better. Uh, So I kind of think about that. Uh, but I also say you have to just cut back on the processed foods. You have to Look at the seasonings that you're using. Most of your seasoning blends, um, even if it's an herbal blend, salt is the first ingredient. Yeah. Uh, so you need to find the ones where they they truly are herbs. Uh, and I also suggest the processed foods. Yeah. You know, if you look Lots for the yeah. lo- look for the low sodium or the low salt options. For the foods that you're eating that are processed. So if you're going to have soup, we all love soup. If you can't make it yourself and control the ingredients, you have your canned soup. Get the the healthier choice, the heart healthy version or the low sodium version of whatever you're purchasing. I buy salt free potato chips. Yeah, oh. that's probably extreme, but there are <laughs> low salt versions as There's well. Low and salt, that, yeah. yeah. And I'm telling you, when I say you can train your tongue, Doctor Mike. If you, if you consume like the salt free or the low sodium and no salt free, there's still salt because salt is in the earth. And so there, there's salt naturally in your potato. Okay. So you're, you're still receiving some sodium, but now you're getting the potassium. 
uh, that's beneficial. And then whenever you eat regular potato chips, after you kind of cut the like, salt, oh, yeah. sometimes I, I have tried, you know, the, the kids go to a party or something and I try a regular potato chip and it's like my mouth gets raw. Like you really start to realize this is loaded with sodium. And, yeah. and so you won't want it. If you can kind of cut back some, once you add it in, you'll be very sensitive to the, to the taste. You know, it's kind of like, let's, maybe we can approach this like integrative medicine, right? Where somebody has a condition, you start them on the drug and then you get them eating better and doing some supplements and little by little, you do more of the goods, you know, more of the natural stuff, mm -hmm. cut down on the, on the drug little by little, maybe yeah. eventually get off the drug. How about the same thing with salt? So like, so like. In, in a recipe, or if you're used to adding a tablespoon of salt in something or a tea, whatever that is, how about like a little less of that and do some Mrs. Dash or some alternative? Yes. And then little by little, you do more of the alternative, less of the actual sodium chloride salt. And then eventually it's all the alternative. Yeah. And the, the, the herbs will give you lots of flavor, great for your brain, great for overall health. So uh, yeah, that is a good suggestion. Now, you know, Dr. Mike, I think we, we need to make sure we kind of answer the question, are, are our doctors right? And, uh, and the reason I'm thinking about that is because electrolyte drinks are in yeah, the little sure. powders. That's, that's the new thing. Huge. Everybody, it's like I need my electrolytes. I watch, uh, no, there's, I watch other people's podcasts and stuff like what we do, and they all are drinking these energy electrolyte drinks now. Right? Do you ever see that? Like they're all, and they're big bottles. Or big yes. Yeah. So there's this idea now that hey, maybe the doctors they've got it wrong. And as a clinical nutritionist, Doctor Mike, I'm going to say they don't have it wrong. Uh, that. <laughs> yes, I, I can't, you know, Thank you. <laughs> they, they just don't. Now, the, the caveat or the exception to the rule are the people who are uh, at risk for dehydration. If you're sure. playing sports, if you work in the sun, my remember our lawn, our tree guy was like had the heat stroke. Oh gosh, Charlie! Gosh, yes. Right. If you if you work outside in the hot Florida sun, if you are exercising, you know, long hours during the day, if you're a runner, if you, yes, you need to rehydrate. You probably need some electrolyte drinks. But people are drinking the electrolyte drinks just as their everyday drink. Yeah. It's like their water now because it tastes a little bit better, right? It's a little more, right. has more flavor to it or whatever. And it is true, you know, some, you know, some sodium type drinks out there, you know, I'm not going to say the brand names, but ones that are made for like kids that have diarrhea, um, you know, they have a decent amount of sodium and adults like to drink them because they taste a little better. They do. So they're drinking these products that were really made for kids with high fever and diarrhea who were dehydrated and they're doing it at their office table or, or desk. Yeah. yeah. That's true. So yeah, I think that, you know, if they're not meant for everyday use, if you are not sweating, let's just put it that way. If you are, if you don't have diarrhea and you're losing your water that way, or you are not sweating on a regular basis where you are you at yeah, risk yeah. for electrolyte loss, you just need to save them. Most people, you know, even those, if we, we look at people who are active, right? People who are, are active um, most of the time uh, in a week, more days than not. They, at the end of the day, you, you, most of you guys just, we just need water. Just hydrate with water. We don't need to worry about all, because you're going to replace, if you're eating a normal diet, you're going to replace all the electrolytes. You know, you yeah. don't need to do that. I think it's more kind of these extreme people we see out in South Florida when the heat index is 115 and they're running at noon. You know, and you, you could, they, and they're just, they're just like, it's like a faucet. <laughs> I mean, yes. those people probably need some electrolytes. Yes, they do. Additional uh, electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's take this conversation um, into a, a, a different route here. Okay there's, there's a lot of different types of salts out there now, right? When I grew up, 
It was just salt. There was no, there were no options. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was just salt. And everybody knows the, it was, I'm not going to say the brand, but everybody knows the blue little container thing and the little, the, the woman with the umbrella. Yes. Like the label. It's, that's what we had. There was nothing else. Oh, come on now. If you go into any health food store, even, even just normal grocery stores now, there's so many options. Tell, walk us through some of these options and what's, what, what's good and what's a little bit more on the trendy side, you know, give, give us the rundown here. Yeah. So you have the table salt, um, comes from salt mines, uh, it's been processed. Um, uh, many of, uh, the other minerals that you would find in the earth, the calcium, the magnesium, the potassium, the iron, zinc, Yeah, they've all been, they've all been removed. Um, and so it's a little more processed. You do find table salt. We'll have, um, some fillers that just helps the, the salt to flow into the containers that the storage containers, there's also, uh, the, the salt with the iodine contains, um, potassium uh, iodide Mm -hmm. and the, the iodide salt is obviously we know that it made a big difference in at least America when we started adding that yeah. to the salt with with goiters, right? right. And with supporting goiters, the, yeah. the health of the thyroid. Uh, iodized salt, one thing I would say is that that iodine is like about four weeks research shows it's kind of, it's gone out of that salt. Yeah. Uh, oh, so it's not really even if you're not using the salt quickly. If you're not right, exactly. So I think industrial, it's fine because they're probably using it quickly. But in your home, I mean, salt lasts me a, a container of salt a couple of a years. Whole, yeah, a, whole, a long time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One of my favorite chefs said that iodized salt is good for your driveway when it's in the winter. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, and 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 so then you also see. The, the, the iodized salt, there's usually dextrose in there to, to kind of keep that iodine around a little bit longer. So you do find it's not like pure salt. And I've found that like when you get to the end and it's like this powdery mm-hmm. dust and you're trying to figure out what is this. So that is that's kind of your typical salt. And then you have the sea salt, which right. is from evaporated seawater. Uh, some challenges with and and the, the claim to fame about sea salt, obviously, is that it has sodium, but it also has some trace minerals, trace amounts of iodine. So those minerals that you find in the sea, there are some pros and cons and, and thoughts about sea salt that you have to be careful that maybe there are microplastics in oh, because the, the oceans, salt. everything because yeah. of the ocean, uh, they're, uh, they're getting the water from the ocean, pumping it in. Um, and so it depends on which sea. It's coming from. Well, what so about uh, what about like in the about. Pacific too? When we have to deal with um, nuclear radiation coming from you know meltdowns of plants right. out in Japan. <laughs> so I, I would say sea salt. Uh, it's not really there. There aren't enough minerals um, that I think it it makes a difference. You're still getting sodium. Then you have the Himalayan salt, which is um, from mines in Pakistan. Um, ancient remnants of seabeds, uh, Himalayan seas, and that's the pink salt. Uh, yeah. Trace minerals uh, gives it its pink color. Uh, there's the if if you see that it's a little more on the red side, that's due to the iron okay. in in that rock, uh, and that's where most of the the Himalayan pink salt is coming from, coming from Pakistan. Um, there are reports that yes, that is the pure. The pure salt, you don't have to worry about um, microplastics and things like that because that those rocks were formed before we had plastic. Before all that, but right, yeah. a study uh, last year, I believe, showed that potentially there's like microplastics in the air or the packaging that they're putting the salt it's every, in. They're it's everywhere now, kind of right now. I know. Right. So it showed that the Himalayan salt had some of the most of the the microplastic so we have taken something that has just like the purest salt source in the world and and humans ruin it 
and now it's not as pure as you would think. So that's something you want to, you know, maybe I, ask the company. Yeah. I've had people say, um, and I've, I've heard this um, from uh, like other RDs, clinical nutritionists, mm -hmm. that they like the Himalayan salt and they do recommend it because of the potassium that it, that it does contain. But then I'm also, th cause, but, now when I hear that, I think, okay, that sounds good, right? Yeah. But how much potassium is really in, is it enough to really counter the sodium? Probably not, right? It's, it's really not. I mean, just with trace amounts of those minerals, but I guess people, better than nothing, every little maybe? bit counts, right? Is I, I, better I guess than so. nothing. Um, kosher uh, salt is on, on the list too. Now that I use kosher salt most of the time in cooking. Um, uh, and, and I don't know why I just, I like, I, I think I like, it sounds weird, but I like the taste of kosher salt a little bit better. I don't know. Well, the granules are a little bit larger. So, so I'm just tasting know, the salt more probably. Maybe a little crunchier <laughs> yeah. adding texture to your food. I don't yeah. know. Uh, but that's really kosher salt is not um certified kosher. It's really just the size. It's the size, yeah. I've been I've been told that, right? But I do I do I do like that one. Seasoned salt now, I don't use that at all. I find that to be very salty tasting. All kinds oh, of seasoned yeah. salts. Mm -hmm. I think those are higher than a standard salt. You end up, I feel like you use more as well. I just don't, I don't, I don't care for that. Now I get confused then with rock, then Himalayan, Himal, isn't all salt essentially, unless you're doing it right from the ocean, like Himalayan, it's coming from rock. So what's rock salt? I guess it's just not, um, purified or not like thoroughly cleansed for for food consumption because the but, process of making the salt you're bringing the the water if it's the sea water in and you're letting that water evaporate or if it's a a, a sea bed or a salt bed where like maybe the tide comes in and then the tide goes back out and then that water collects and then based on the humidity and the temperature that water evaporates and you end up with the salt. Mm -hmm. So it's different than, I guess Himalayan salt could be considered rock salt, but it's processed in a way where it's like rinsed and in it's better to consume, for human basically. use. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I So it was confusing because on one hand, I know rock salt is, is listed really not as not meant for consumption, but yet it's used in ice cream. But it's, isn't it used to like in the ice cream maker, like it's not inside of the ice cream. It's to kind of keep it as it's churning cold. I guess. I don't know. I I don't know how to make ice cream. I just. Yeah. With it. ice cream, it's not coming in contact with the food oh, in the okay. ice cream maker. It's, it's kind of on the outer edges as it, as the ice cream is churning. So that ice, that cream gets super duper cold okay. to turn into the ice cream. Okay. <laughs> Well, at the end of the day, I, I like kosher salt. I don't use a lot of Himalayan salt. Um, maybe I should look into because uh, because they're all you you can get it in any grocery store now. I you mean, can. all these different salts are very are readily um, available. What if I don't want any sodium? Like what if what if I'm gonna be I'm gonna be like your dad? Your dad has inspired me. Oh, and I, and I well, I'm just. I'm just saying that for the show. Uh, your, dad, dad. your dad has inspired me. I don't want to use sodium anymore. Like, what does he do? What, what are some of the... Yeah, so we have... Well, he cooks with herbs. Um, he reads every single label. And he knows those hidden places. Like, the bread, he's, all, he's very particular on the types of bread he buys. If he has soup, he's watching the labels. His uh, Even his protein drink. Sometimes he's like, this this protein drink is pretty high in salt. So like, you know, healthier food options. So you watch those. Um, there's, of course, the potassium salt. We, my mom doesn't really cook with that anymore. I think we phased that out. Um, my dad is kind of okay with just watching and reading the labels. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. there's that is the option. There's the salt that you gave me. Remember that green, green salt. salt? Green salt, yeah. Yes. Disgusting. 
<laughs> so that is also an option. Well, tell them what it, green salt is. I don't know if people. Yeah, it's, people. it's the salt that's coming from um, like algae. Yeah, algae. Because seaweed. algae's from the sea. Yeah, yeah. and and so it's giving I, you that I, flavor. I, so I, I got this, um, and I tried it, and I immediately knew that I wasn't going to use it after trying it. So I gave it to Dr. Crystal, thinking she might try it. I don't know if you liked it or not, but I wrote the company that made it. And I said, listen, good try, good effort. I appreciate you trying to limit sodium in people's diet. That's awesome. But you, they got to do, it, it, it tasted too much like raw seaweed. I mean, there was, there was a aftertaste to it that kind of ruined the food a little bit. Right. Well, I think you have to eat it when you're having... No, Japanese I, food or Asian maybe so, Asian maybe so. meal with you know yeah. some miso and some ramen yeah. and then you use that. Well, listen, what a great what a great show! I mean, so salt. At the end of the day, um, we we consume way too much, um, and and Dr. Chris and I both agree that with so many products out there um, with hidden salts with high levels of salt purposely, these electrolyte um, rehydration products that people are using when they don't need it. I mean, we were already getting too much sodium just by the foods we eat. And now we're seeing people drinking it. And it's just, we're, we're, over, we're overloading it. And we talked about some of the clinical consequences of that. Um, and so I, I just think I like that approach, you know, maybe not as strict as your dad, <laughs> but where where can you cut out? Where what are some of the things you're eating that maybe you can limit the sodium or cut out? Maybe go low go low sodium versions, low salt versions, mm -hmm. and just start getting used to that. Because as you said, you can train your your taste buds, right? Yes. Yeah. And so I listen. I learned a lot from this today, um, and and hopefully uh, you did too. Uh, by the way, you can go to lifeextension.com/salt, and that is a buyer's guide. Um, to thir 13 different types of salt. I didn't, I mean, there's more than what we just talked about, right? Yes. <laughs> 13 different salts, lifeextension.com slash salt. Don't forget, you go to life, uh, um, liveforevers.com. We got tons of other podcasts to listen to. And when we do, we just ask that you, you know, give us your comment, like it, share it. And of course, subscribe so you never miss a show. And by the way, our sponsor, Life Extension, is offering you a really nice discount. You go to lifeextension.com. Um, when you're ready to check out, you go to your cart. There's a discount code section. Just type in podcast and you're going to get 10% off your entire order of $50 or more plus free shipping and handling. That's because they, listen, we got a great audience and we really appreciate you guys listening, listening to us for over 400 episodes. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm Dr. Mike and that is Dr. Crystal. We'll see you next time.